Hey guys, how is everybody doing? I pray that everyone is having a terrific Tuesday. Uh, I personally have just been so blessed today. It's just been really a wonderful day. Um, had to bring myself down because I have been like so full of excitement and joy and happiness and the way that the Lord expresses himself when we're together, it was just like I go through a whole whirlwind of emotions when I'm with him. Um, just excitement, uh, weeping, praising him, singing songs. Um, I am just telling him all kinds of good things about himself. This is just how I am with God. And it always... The more I put my time into him and the more I pour all of this authentic love into him, it's the more the Lord pours himself into me. And it's just the most amazing, the most amazing experiences of my life. I have to tell you guys that. Um, once you finally get to that place with God, it's just like, you you don't even you can't even believe that all those years you didn't know it was that like that. You didn't know it could be that good. But when you get there, it's like, wow, like this is so amazing. Like you've hit a gold mine. You've hit someplace somebody's never hit before. And it's uh such a powerful place to be in, you know. Um, for the Lord to show you that kind of kindness and favor that he comes upon you like that. And it's not just, he gives you like little trickles of himself here and there. This is an everyday thing. And I want to tell somebody that this is something that God can do with you every day. And he does it for those of us who choose to have a relationship with him. And this isn't the message, but this is what God wants me to speak on first. Cause there is an, there is a message and there is a dream. Uh, attached to that with a, with a scripture the Lord wants me to read, but I have to get this out right now. This that I'm feeling this very moment, it has to come out right now. Um, God really desires this love relationship with us where nobody can get in between it. Nobody can make you move out of your place with him. Nobody can make you move out of the will that he has for you. Nobody can make you move out of anything. This is the place he wants for you to be in with him. Uh, nobody can move you out of your relationship with him. It's just, it's so strong that you can't be moved. And this is what God wants for us, from all of us, really. Um, he doesn't just want us to have a relationship based upon with what our parents had or based upon what other people we looked up to had, okay, it's wonderful that other people have those relationships. Don't get me wrong. And it's a good reference point. It's good to say, you know, I would love to have that. Um, and Lord, if you can make mine greater, please, by all means. It's wonderful to look at it in that manner and um, look at it and say, you know, God is so amazing. He's so good. Whatever that person has, Lord, help me to get to that place. And But then you have to do the work. You have to do what it takes for God to, you know, and he has to see that you, you, what you're after is really him. You're not after just his power. You're not after the anointing. You're not after uh, what other people are after. He needs to know that it's him that you're after. He needs to know that you'll love him no matter what. He needs to know that you're going to love him if he gives you all of the things that you have desired to get from him. And he needs to know that you'll love him even if you don't get those things. He want, God wants an actual relationship, a real love thing with you guys. Um, and some people may feel that it's you know, they can't experience it. And then, so they look at others who experience it and they become envious and jealous and they become haters and they become, ain't no way God is with you like that. This and that, and they, God ain't talking to you like that. And I've written on this a couple of years ago, um, about how people act like that. And I may try to find that tonight, uh, put it back on my Facebook page again, but I've written on this because it's true. A lot of us who, 
who actively love on God this way, we're looked at as weird. We're looked at as crazy. We're looked at as all sorts of things. We're looked at as we're unbalanced, this and that and the third. And I beg to differ. It's the people who don't love him this way that are unbalanced. And those are the same people that will believe a, a actual doctor in the world over Dr. Jesus. Those are the same people that will believe a judge in the world over the head judge, which is our Lord and Savior. Okay. Those are the same people who will believe the report of the world over the report of our Lord Jesus. Okay. And so you see how this goes. You see how this goes. Whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. You'd put nothing in, you get nothing out. You put, you come to God in a fake fashion or you come to him because you're trying to, you know, gain something. You're not going to get anything from him. Okay. So somebody needs to hear this. I don't know why God had me go there, but somebody needs to hear that. We're going to hop into this message really quick. We're going to hop into the dream. Then I'm going to hop over to the scripture and then we'll talk about it a bit and then we'll be done. All right. I feel you, Holy Spirit. God is just so good. Oh my God. His presence is just so wonderful. So, so awesome. He's so awesome. Okay, guys. So, <clears throat> excuse me. This message is going to be for a few people. Uh, I don't know who it's for, but it's for somebody, okay? Or somebody's. Whoever it's for, you'll know it. Um, and honestly, by faith, that's how you obtain certain things. So if you don't have faith, you can't expect to obtain the things that you desire to have, okay? Um, and if it's not in God's will for you uh, to have a particular thing, if it's not in his will, it's not in his will. Okay. So we need to figure out what God's will is for our lives before we start going and saying this, 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 this is mine. No, you need to find out, is that the Lord's will for you before you do that? Um, excuse me, guys. <clears throat> so we're going to get into this dream and, um, We'll move from there. Um, so in this dream, I was at a courthouse. The courthouse was a very large courthouse. It gave me sort of like a castle type of courthouse vibe. It was like wrapped around, but then there was a part of the courthouse that was so tall, high up into looking like going into the sky. It was so tall, like really tall. Uh, inside of the courthouse, it looked like just a grand palace courthouse inside of the courthouse. They had the elevators, of course, and then they had the stairs. <clears throat> now, I don't know which way I took going in or up or, you know, I knew which way I took coming down, but I don't know which way I took going up. All I know is that there was somebody there that in waking life, I know this person. I know both people, um, but strangely enough, I didn't see the person driving the car, but I knew it was that person's car. And so I knew that person had to be there with this person. Now, both people don't like each other like that. But for this for this court case, they kind of uh, banded together against me, which is typically what you see people in the world do. Uh, you'll have people who cannot stand one another. I mean, they absolutely hate each other's guts with the passion. They don't like each other. Like if they weren't fighting against you, they would be clawing each other's eyes out. But because the factor of, uh, is you, because it's you that they want to bring down, they don't mind joining forces with another person that's trying to take them out. They don't mind the white guy had me go there, but they don't mind doing that. They don't mind because that is what that represented. The two people being together joining forces against me, but they don't even care for each other. They don't like each other. Uh, they literally are taking one another to court themselves. I mean, literally, this is real life that I'm talking about. Okay. I know this is like factual things. And so let's keep it moving. Let's go on with this dream. So I'm in the courthouse. We're all the way at the way at the top. Like it was like in the heavens somewhere. We're up there. That's how high this building was. And 
I hear the judge goes, you've won and looked at me and said, you've won your case. And the, my expression, y'all, the joy in my face. I don't think I could have been any more happier in that moment. Then it was like my mouth dropped like, and I started screaming and running and jumping around. And the person that I had won the case against, they looked so defeated. They look mad. They look angry. Like I dare this person win and beat me in this case. So after I had won that case, I go to the person and I said, now that I've won this case, I'm ready to race you down to our vehicles. And the person said to me, you know, good luck. You're not going to win this one. And I said, well, why not? And they said, because you're taking the stairs and I'm taking the elevator. So I guess the person assumed, <coughs> they assumed that, <clears throat> excuse me, because I was taking the stairs and they were taking the elevator. It meant that they were going to beat me again. Uh, uh, well, they didn't beat me the first time, but this particular time they were actually going to win. So we, go, we, we, we get started to run in this race, but the person was taking their time because they had felt they had it in the bag. They were in the ele they were walking towards the elevator. They were, you know, taking a slow time. And mind you now, I told you guys this uh place was high up there. It, I mean, there's no way you have it probably had a million flights of stairs because it was so high. But when I took off, I took off at a speed of lightning. The only thing I can liken it to is like, you know how you watch a TV program and it has like uh, it's showing somebody running and then it's like a colorful light behind it. That's what it looked like. It looked like a rainbow effect. And I sped. It just zoomed all the way down, all the way down, just zooming straight on through. And when I say it was fast, speed of lightning, you couldn't even really see my physical body because that's how fast I was going down all of those stairs. So when I finally got down to the bottom, which did not take long, I might add, it was so fast. I was down there in like seconds. That's how quick it was. I see the person walking out casually and then they see me just standing at the car relaxed. And they looked at me like, how did you get down here? And then after that, I woke up from the dream. So you guys, I think you can figure that out pretty much. Uh, Sometimes people think that they have everything figured out. They feel that they have God figured out. They feel they have you figured out. They feel they have everything figured out because isn't that like how humans are? Um, they just feel as though they're smarter than you. They're brighter than you. They're more educated than you are. They have so much more than you. And then they look at you, you know, and, and this is most mostly every person who has been called by the Lord. It's always been something. It's always been something. It's either they thought that you were not smart enough, not bright enough, you didn't come from the right family, um, or the people um, tried to pretty much reject you all of your life, mistreat you all of your life. I mean, do the most harmful things and say the most harmful things against you all of your life, only and to treat you like you were an underdog, only for you to become the top dog. OK, and I'm hearing the Holy Spirit saying there's no winning when they come up against you. They will not win. They cannot win. It's the race has already been set. And I also hear the Holy Spirit say that those that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. So though that person seemed as though they were getting a head start, they were going into the elevator and they felt like very cocky and confident that they had me figured out and they were going to beat me on down to the, where we were going to the cars, they lost, they still lost. So not only did they lose one time, but they lost twice. Okay. And I'm hearing the Lord saying double for your trouble. So a lot of you have gone through a whole lot of unfair situations People have treated you unjustly. People have slandered you. 
People have, you know, and you got some of these, the same people who have done these things, they're looking for ways to scheme their ways back into your life because they see where you're heading. They see where you're heading. But these people, they can't go with, with you where God is taking you. They can't go. Okay. It's okay to forgive. It's okay to, you know, say, you know, if the person needs help, you help them, but they can't be that close to you. And especially if God doesn't allow it. Okay. So a lot of you guys have been treated. You've been pushed to the back. You've been pushed to the side. Uh, you've done good to people who have turned around and done evil to you. You've watched the very people you've done good to treat evil people better than they treat you. Mm. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You've watched people do this to you. Well, the Lord is saying he's going to do you better. He's going to do you better than the people who did you evil. And those same people are going to watch you do better. Okay. Because not because of your own goodness, but because this is what the Lord wills to do for your life. This is what he wills to do for his children. Those who have dedicated their lives to him. Those that have said, God, you have full access to my life. You have full control over my life. Whatever it is you want to do with my life, do it. Whatever you need to change, change it. However you need to, whoever you need to move, move them. I completely give you my entire life. God loves to hear those things. That's what he wants to hear. And that's what moves him. That's what moves his hand upon your life. Okay. So not only did I win at the top level, which means whatever it was, I won it all. At that top, I won it all. Okay. There's no, there's nowhere to go. When you get all the way at the top, you're there. There's nowhere to go. You've won it. And if you want it in the courts of heaven, you have won it down here on this earth. If it's one in a spiritual realm, you have won it down at you on one in the earth already because it has to be one in the spiritual realm for it to be one down here in this earth for it to manifest and happen. OK. And so. Somebody going to get blessed. Now, I don't know who this message is for, but somebody's going to somebody's in for a really big blessing one that you can't even contain okay and the lord is saying it's not gonna be a trickle blessing like something like how uh when it drizzles it's a little drizzle and you only get a few drops the lord is saying no this is major this is going to be a pouring i just see rain falling right now a pouring down of his blessings upon your life and it's going to be double what you thought it was going to be it's going to be bigger than what you thought it was going to be so whatever you got before god right now guys Whatever it is that you may have before God in the, in the courts of heaven or even just in a natural court, even in just a natural court, you got to start believing and seeing that thing is already being one. And the way that you show God that you believe it is by even when you hear a negative report about it, you reject it. You say in the name of Jesus, I've already won this. I've already won this. I don't care what y'all guys are going to court for. If you say by faith, I've already won this, I've won this house, I've won these children, I've won this money that's been held back, I've won whatever. By faith, by faith. And then you say, you go to say, God, I trust you, I have faith in you, I thank you in advance, then you're going to win. And then you're going to win. And only if it's in God's will. Okay, so we always want to go make sure that we are in the Lord's will for our lives. We're not walking the way we want to walk. We're walking according to what God says, our, the uh, direction we are supposed to be heading into, and we're walking how he wants us to walk, okay? Now, the scripture he would have me to read this evening is coming from 1 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 9, and I'm going to read verses 24 to 27. Let me see. Chapter 9. Verses 24, where am I at? Oh my goodness. Um, okay, here we go. Know you that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. Okay. So run that you may obtain. So everybody's running, but only one can receive this prize. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, 
not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. And in the Amplified version, it says, but like a, well, I'm reading the ending of it, verse 27, but like a boxer, I buffet my body, handle it roughly, discipline it, discipline it by hardships and subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unimproved and rejected as a counterfeit. So guys, you can read this in whatever version you want to read it in, but basically what it's saying at the end is that we want to always discipline ourselves, discipline ourselves in this thing so that we are not a castaway. We are not rejected <clears throat> because it's a terrible thing for us to get everybody else in and in the end we become rejected, okay, or said to be a counterfeit, which I'm pretty sure... Those that are following me, I don't have too many counterfeits following me. Um, and if you are one, you need to go on and just repent. Ask God to help clean you up and uh, change your ways so that you don't miss out on, you know, heaven. You don't miss out on the things God has for you. And so, yeah, that's the scripture reading. Um, chapter 9 like i said verse 24 through 27 you can take your time and read that again uh whenever you have the time to read it <clears throat> so as you're running the race do the work always have the lord searching your heart always have a repentant spirit always stay before god uh, willing for the lord to remove things out of you that need to go and you're going to win, okay? Because God is looking at the sincerity and purity of your heart. That is what he's looking for. Others think that he's looking for something, whatever, but that's not what he's looking for, okay? That's what people get God confused at. He knows who belongs to him, you know, regardless of what someone else thinks, they may not have the same faith that you have. They may not hear from God the way that you hear from God. So your movement is different from their movement because they don't hear on the same level that you do. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes your faith will have you look nutty. Your faith will have you uh, looking crazy. It will do that. But in the end of it all, you know, hey, sometimes you just have to look crazy for God. Okay. You have to look crazy for God and let God get all the glory either way, either way. Okay. Um, because at the end of the day, it's the Lord who is orchestrating certain things to happen. So like I said, if you're going to win, if you win at the highest level, you've won it all. Mm. Win at the highest level, you've won it all. And it doesn't matter about the smoke screen. It doesn't matter about how many demons rise up against you, he or she, whoever they are. I don't care who they are. I don't care if the devil giving them things to say or speak, showing them things to think that they uh, got you figured out. The devil is a lie, baby, a real big lie. Okay. Uh, let me just tell you, you know, sometimes the, sometimes the enemy will throw things out to have you miss what God is going to do. And then God will come back to confirm to you, you are on track with him. See, that's why you got to have a relationship with God. Because he's the one that's going to confirm. He's the one that's going to bring about the conviction if you are in the wrong. He's going to bring the conviction to you. If you're anything like me, when I get convicted, I don't waste time repenting. I used to waste a little bit of time repenting, but that's before the Lord lit a fire under my behind. Now, that's a difference. It's different when God, um, when you don't repent and God is telling you to repent. Now I can tell you all the stuff God done did God done did to me, but it's been it's been some crazy stuff where it's like you're gonna learn today, honey. Okay, if you're my child, you're gonna learn today that when I need for you to repent, you're going to repent. And when you feel him on you like that, you repent. It's almost like a, a forceful, like you're you repent. And he, this is, uh, this may not be a relationship that he has with everybody else. Everybody's relationship may be somewhat different. Everybody may be on different levels. The point I'm making is with certain people that he's using you, it's a certain way you have to be with him. Mm. 
Jesus, I feel him. It's a certain way you have to be with him. And it's a certain way he's going to be with you because he is going to get all the glory out of your life. Okay, this is not about other people. This is about you. He's going to get the glory from your life. So I don't know who this message is for. Okay, take it to the Lord and pray about it. Uh, but trust me and believe if it's uh, uh, in your spirit and you feel it's your message, you better go ahead by faith and claim it and tell, tell uh, God, okay, God, I receive my blessings. I receive my breakthrough. Thank you, Lord, that I'm a winner, that I'm winning this. I'm winning this court case. I'm winning everything, everything thrown at me. I'm about to win it all. I'm about to win everything God said was mine. I'm about to win it. Okay. And if you're going to God, right. And you're not just like looking to God, like a one night stand, like you trying to, you know, you're trying to sleep up with God to get stuff from him. God don't like that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's nasty. God don't like you to treat him like a one night stand. He don't, mm -mm. he don't like that. You know, he's not going to ever get close to people that treat him like he's a sugar daddy. Woo. Jesus. Wow. That's a word right there. Don't treat my papa like a sugar daddy. Don't do it. <laughs> Listen, don't treat my daddy like he a pimp. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's no, that's not going to, that doesn't give, that don't get God's, that don't get his attention. He don't like all of that. So he want to be treated like he's special. He want to be treated like he means something to us. Whether we get what we ask for or he decides we don't get it. He wants to know that we love him for who he is and not for what he can give us. Okay. God's not going to pour out his anointing and power and all these things on people who are treating him like a sugar daddy. So that's a word for somebody. I don't know who it's for, but you know, God ain't your pimp. He's not your sugar daddy, okay? He's just, he's not that. He's no, 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 no. He's not that. So um, that is the word. That is the message. I pray that it has helped somebody. Somebody about to win double. Somebody about to start. Somebody who started at the end about to be in, up in the front. Somebody about to win it all. And I pray to God, whoever's winning it all, please share your testimony. Please put it in the comment section. Do what you need to do. I want to. Praise God with you. I want to rejoice in your in everything God got coming your way. I want to rejoice with you. Hallelujah. So I'm going on that note. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you to all my new followers for following this YouTube channel. Um, I am so blessed and thankful that you guys are with me. And I really cannot wait to share with you guys again. Please be safe and have a lovely evening. Take care. Bye.